This is the JVC GR DVL9000 camcorder. It records standard definition video on mini DV cassettes. Its CCD sensor has global shutter, just like on a film camera, and can capture a whole frame at once, just like a film camera. There is no combing and no interline Twitter, characteristic to interlaced video. There is no jitter, characteristic to analog video. There is no skew, jello or flash bending that plagues modern CMOS-based video cameras. This camcorder gets as close to a film camera as it gets. Look at them. They're like brothers, although born 30 years apart. This is a Kodak Instamatic Super 8 camera. The Instamatic movie camera first released in 1965 was the first truly accessible movie camera with an easy-to-load film cartridge. In mid-1980s, Kodak turned away from Super 8, switching to 8mm video format. Super 8 went into oblivion for 30 years, until Jeff Clark, Kodak CEO, announced the first consumer product from Kodak in many years at Consumer Electronics Show in 2016. What the hell? We are announcing the first consumer product from Kodak in many years. In fact, the first camera for motion picture since 1982, and it is um, the new Super 8 camera. It'll be available later this year, and it's, an, it's a symbol to what Kodak um, cares about in our commitment to film. It is 2022. The new Super 8 Kodak camera has never materialized. I guess this is a symbol of Kodak's commitment to film. But you can substitute this camcorder for the Kodak's hybrid film digital camera. It has 10x f1.2 lens, a complete cinematographer's tool at your hands. It has 4-inch LCD viewfinder, composing shots is easier than ever. It can do 16x9 shooting. It has onboard sound recorder. It offers two frame rates, 30 frames per second interlaced and 30 frames per second progressive. And of course, digital connectivity combined with digital capture helps you create like never before. Now this looks like a true progeny of the original Instamatic. Similar styling, similar size, similar features, and the same purpose. The price? Not exactly similar. The JVC GR DVL9000 was sold for $1300 in 1999. But I got it used for the price of the Instamatic, and the best of all, it works. The unassuming brick-like design hides a formidable movie machine with a fast lens, one third inch CCD sensor, and progressive scan recording capability. Progressive scan recording was a fairly new and advanced feature in the 1990s, so JVC had to clarify how it worked in the operating manual. The instructions explain that video shot in progressive mode looks less natural and more jerky than regular interlaced video. Now we would say it looks more film-like. By the way, have you noticed combing in the Kodak spot? This is because Kodak shot this piece with an interlaced video camera and didn't care or didn't know how to deinterlace. You won't see anything like this from the JVC if you use progressive mode. If 30 frames per second is not jerky enough, you can throw away every other frame in an editing app, reducing frame rate to 15 frames per second very close to native Super 8 frame rate of 18 frames per second and even closer to 16 frames per second rate of standard 8mm film cameras. A mini DV cassette holds one hour of video. This is like 20 rolls of film. Unlike file-based digital camcorders, you can get your video as one continuous reel. I mean, as a single file. Some people just hate handling individual files that modern camcorders create for each shot. Now look at this screen. At 4 inches, 
It is larger than on the professional DVX100. It must have been expensive to make in 1999. The resolution is not very high, only 112,000 pixels. It is not very bright even at the highest brightness and there are no focusing aids. The camcorder has a socket for external microphone, but the sound level cannot be adjusted manually. It is possible to control the audio through the headphone output. There is no shoe on the top, but there is a tripod socket on the bottom. The battery is inserted on the bottom as well. I got a replacement Castar battery together with the charger. The locking cutout was on the wrong side, so I had to cut one myself. And I cut it through, but it works. The camcorder has a standard 4-pin DV connector, and this is how you are supposed to capture video of it. In case you do not have a FireWire port on your computer, there are composite and S-video outputs as well. I must say I was not able to make my Windows 7 machine recognize this camcorder, so I had to use another DV camcorder to capture the video. All in all, this is a very nice video making machine that can hold its own even today, and it was nothing less than a revelation in the late 1990s. Digital camcorders like this revolutionize low budget video making, allowing amateurs and independent filmmakers to produce content not only for family and travel usage, but also for broadcast TV and even for theatrical releases. Long live DV! That is all. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye.